Hello everyone, it's Melinda and today we're going to be looking at black amphiboles, which are also uh, very commonly known as hornblend. Uh, here in Ontario at the Torrey Hill location, we are very lucky to have lots and lots of plentiful <laughs> black amphibole. Um, mostly in this rough form here, but you can also, you know, excitingly uh, find these nice crystal shaped ones with good faces, even terminations. So that makes them extra fun. Um, but like I said, they're plentiful. So, uh, you know, after a while, some people tend to just consider them tossers. Um, or if you're a newbie, you might uh, look at a nice formed one and think you have something extra special. They're often uh, mistaken for Richterite or fluororichterite, um, or if they're very, very glossy, sometimes people think they've found a titanite, which is a, a rare mineral from that location. Um, and you know, it's so fun to be a dreamer. I was too when I first started, but uh, you get to know these guys. They're very, very common. They're black. Uh, they have that textured inside when they're broken. Uh, whether or not they're glossy, uh, you know, they're, they'll never be as reflective as titanite. When you find titanite, you, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're just all sorts of fun. So I'll start by showing you the more typical types of chunks that we see at this location. And you'll be able to see that inner texture really well. And it's still nicely reflective, even though this is a completely broken piece. There's no nice sides here or anything. Um, you'll also notice little apatite, green apatite crystals. This location is famous for its very translucent jemmy green apatite crystals. And this stuff often accompanies them. And usually in chunks like this which I still find very beautiful. Hmm. I still think that's beautiful. <clears throat> so here's a nice crystal. It actually terminated on this side, as you can see. Here's the, the point, the termination in the center there. There we go. And the other side as well, although the point is here and the other side was ch chopped off when it broke. But otherwise, and again, you can see that characteristic texture on the inside. That's such a telltale right there. Um, beautiful faces. I still think this is a, a wonderful specimen. I love this one. <laughs> Even if it's just horn blend, as some people say, or black amphibole, it doesn't matter. I still absolutely love it. Gorgeous. Uh, so amphibole is a group of inosilicate minerals forming prism or needle-like crystals, generally containing ions of iron uh, and or magnesium in their structure. And they can be green, black, like we see here, colorless, white, yellow, blue, or brown. Um, and the International Mineralogical Association currently classifies amphiboles as a mineral supergroup uh, within which are two groups and several subgroups. So um, black amphibole is more of like a general term uh, to describe a, a mineral. It's not like a very specific mineral type, but rather like a group, a, a word used to describe like a whole group of different minerals. <laughs> Uh, but they share similarities, which is why they're in that group. Beautiful. I love that one. This one's like a cute little cluster. I find them so charming. I don't mind that it's not, you know, a precious gemstone. It just... But I'm a sucker for well-shaped crystals. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me if they're black. I love them. Oh absolutely gorgeous. <clears throat> so the name Amphibole was used by Rene Just Hue. Hue? I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, uh, he used it to include tremolite, actinolite, and hornblende. Uh, the group was so named by Hue in allusion to the protein variety in composition and appearance assumed by its minerals. 
So that's why, you know, they've kind of been grouped together in that way. Uh, this term has since been applied to the entire group rather than just those three minerals, uh, tremolite, actinolite, and hornblende. There are many others that are included in amphiboles now. Isn't that so pretty? And they can be quite reflective, but I'm telling you, they're still not even remotely as reflective as a titanite. That's like a mirror. <laughs> they're really amazing. Extremely glossy and reflective. Now this one's cute because it's got some green appetite in it, and I just find that charming. <laughs> <clears throat> so hornblende is the more familiar term for black amphibole. It is not a recognized mineral in its own right. The name is used as a general uh, or field term, and it refers to a dark-colored amphibole. <clears throat> so oftentimes people will say hornblende in the forums, and someone will offer a black amphibole instead, uh, because black amphibole is technically... Uh, you know, the geological term, whereas hornblende is more of like a, uh, I guess a nickname, a geology-based nickname. <laughs> I love the green appetite in there. I still think they're lovely. And then my last one, I very much enjoy this one as well. Kind of reminds me of one a friend of mine has. So neat. Oh, I just love that. <clears throat> so the mineral hornblende, or uh, black or dark amphibole, has very few uses. Its primary use would be as a mineral specimen in, uh, you know, in our collections, which I'm very content with <laughs> but beyond us loving it for what it is uh, it doesn't really have very many other uses so i'll just cherish it i'm not a, a mineral snob i literally love them all and i just find these are so charming anyways I suppose if you're, you know, telling yourself that it might be something special and then you find out it's not, that could be disappointing, but if you go into it knowing what you have, they're just beautiful and charming in their own in their own right, I feel like. But that could just be me. <laughs> All right. There you have it, folks. Black amphibole, which will, you will often hear be referred to as uh Horn blend. And there you have it. I hope you found that informative. I loved making it. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. See you next time.